Brilliant. Uh, we, we're not actually really fully start until 8 o'clock. If, if you saw the email that said what was happening and uh, the schedule or the schedule, depending on which slide that you speak, um, you will have seen that we're going to start some talks from 8 till 9. If you so could, um, this bit now is really out for the, you to the, uh, grab a Coke or a banana or a bag of nuts or whatever. Okay. Find somebody. However, you've got some business to do for the first 15 minutes. There are three stations around the room. We have one over there on the wall, and you, go, you head over there. Nathan will probably be lurking around just to help you if you don't know what to do. You're going to grab a post-it note. You're going to put your name on it. You can answer the question, what should happen after tonight? We don't want this just to be a massive splash in a pond, and then two months later, people are saying, what was that all about? Nothing's happened since. We also have another question on the wall over, over there. See where Andy Piper is? And it says, why did you come to this event? Why did you come to Raspberry Jam London? What are you expecting? So that when you walk out of here at half past nine, you'll think, gosh, yeah, I, I got really what I was expecting to happen. And we have another one, which I can't see, which is behind the pillar. And the question on that one is, what do you hope to achieve? What do you hope to achieve? So why did you come here? What did you hope to achieve? And what do you think should happen next? So about another 12 minutes. Oh, I should have mentioned as well, there's a prize as well. The prize will be at the end of the evening, we're going to collect in all the post-it notes with names on, and we're going to pull some of them out and give some prizes that may have a raspberry flavor to them, okay? So go for it. 12 minutes. So lots of stuff uh, going on at the moment. I'll just leave you to watch.
So if you've not filled in a positive note yet, you're going to be so, so sad later on when we're giving out prizes. If, if you've got something that you're yearning to talk to the Raspberry Pi community about, come and see me in the next few minutes. Let me know what you want to talk about. <laughs> Probably not that interesting, James, is it? <laughs> It's that I'm not going to start really for another few um, few minutes. Can you hear me? Helps if I unmute. All oh, right. <laughs> um, did you say Simon Humphreys not about? Not that I can say. No. It's not no, because I wanted to order some T-shirts. I've got a good deal for twenty-five. For oh, 100 right. quid. But I'm, <laughs> I'm, should I put my credit card on it? That's the question I'm asking myself. No, oh, yeah. Sounds good to me. <laughs> well, that's your petrol money gone if I've blown it. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. That's all right. I'm sure you, you make your money back. Yeah, I will. I'll sell them, worst case. <laughs> they are. Um, However, it knows me so well that I do. <laughs> the Raspberry Pi jam is being handed around, as you can see. Yes. And the scones are here. Oh, you see, we're not going to get any of that at Cambridge. <laughs> Except for know. us. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I'll have to sweet talk Rosie. <laughs> yes, we need to have Rosie to give it to the presenters. <laughs> oh, starting about five minutes, James, okay? Okay, no problem. I'll just leave, I'll just leave you looking. Okay, cheers. Um, we're streaming live as well. <laughs> we're streaming for future. Oh, is it on YouTube as well? Yeah, it's on YouTube. Right. So you don't need Google Plus or Google Plus. It's Google Plus, you do need Google Plus. Uh, unfortunately. <laughs> Why can't everyone just let them view their content without having to log in, register, well, give them your, all your details? I know, I know, but. We should spam you. That's, uh, that's a trade off. You know, don't want to go. Good to have that. No one's joining in the hunt because it's not working. We're just watching. We're just watching a, a bit thing with Villa, and that's about it, actually. So people say. How can make things inverted on a webcam? Not on a proper camera. One, one's here, one's in the pillar. And if you've just arrived in the room and you don't know what's going on, quick, grab a post-it note, answer a question, put your name on it, and we start in five minutes. How come everyone's, everything's flipped on a webcam, but it's not on a proper camera? I don't know. I've always wondered that, because I tried to take a photo. Um, I was selling some stuff or whatever. And you can I've got a photo of it as well, isn't it? I know, I've no idea. Weird. Weird. It is weird. I agree. Alright. <laughs> 
See, there's a swivel running there, James, in the background. Yes, yeah. It's, it's, um, That's what it is. Four yeah, it's seconds. filming. Doing all the hard work for me. Oh, that's perfect. This, this is much cleaner than the last one you did in Prague. Yeah, well, this is because it's got a better connection. Oh, that's why I was asking about the connection in Prague. Seconds. Well, it was meant to be a broadband one, but got, you know. Yeah. We would have had the pano, but um, they couldn't get it together. The pano 360 makes your oh, okay. system. <laughs> we should have a, a leased line at least in um, in Cambridge, so we should have a very good connection, and it's straight onto the main internet. Three, Here we go. Two, one. Now. Good evening, and welcome to London Raspberry Jam. I'm sorry, I thought you'd be a little bit more excited than that. Welcome to London, Raspberry Jam. <laughs> That's more like it. Now, um, you'll, you'll tell very, very quickly within about two or three minutes. I'm, I'm a bit crazy in the way I think. I don't always think in straight lines. And it's possible that some of the things I've planned or talked about for this evening just might not happen because I might forget. If we leave something out or we leave somebody out or feel, somebody feels they're not getting what they want, please talk to me or tweet it or email it afterwards if you're too polite and that kind of thing. 
This evening, it's just really three aims. This is, a, this is like a pilot tonight. If this could be the last one and the first one to combine, or it could be that this is the start of many more things. So the plan is to start a London Raspberry Jam, or many London Raspberry Jams. We might even have a northeast, a north, a northwest. We don't know, or it could just be that we have a London Raspberry Jam that happens once a month. Another plan, aim, to network. There are lots of people in this room, lots of people who have got things that, that you need, that you want, but you don't know who they are and how to get them from them. So to the, part of this evening should be to help you. Anybody in the room who's got a Raspberry Pi, just say, aye. 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 Right, I'm down. Aye. <laughs> we can shout you we hate Alan, but I don't want to hate anybody with Raspberry Pi. We want to send our love out to Raspberry Pi people tonight. We're sending it from London off to Cambridge. If you haven't got a Raspberry Pi, just kind of Raspberry Pi. Just kind of go, mm. Okay, so there is a bit of disquiet among some of you. So this evening's event should really help those people who haven't with those who have. Some of the people I've met have come up to me and they said, Hey, hey, Alan, I've got my Raspberry Pi. Great, what have you done with it? Oh, um, I've just been a bit too busy. And then I've heard other people go, what do you mean you're too busy? I've got loads of things I want to do with my Raspberry Pi, and mine's not alright. I've only just today got the email that says in three weeks' time, I might be able to order it. So this is trying to put the gift to have with the have-nots. And then the third thing is, I'm hoping that this evening will in some way educate, entertain, and inform you about the whole Raspberry Pi scene. Now, my plan is, that's the introduction. That's what this evening is all about. If you get a bit tired and listen to people talking or whatever, there's nothing wrong with going over to the bar. There's lots of little spaces, little quiet corridors and stuff like that. You can start your own little raspberry mini jam, you know, down the corridor or whatever. We've got stuns that have been provided by Rosie Slosek. Is it Slausek or Slosek? Oh, it's like stuns and scones and... Oh, never mind. Scones, okay. <laughs> Rosie's made the scones, so tonight they're called scones, okay? <laughs> you can find that. We also have some people at Mozilla to say thank you. So thank you, Mozilla. Thank you. <laughs> so we've got people like Cyberdees, or you might only call them Dees if you don't follow them. <laughs> He's over there. We've got Ryan Watson. Ryan gives a wave. Hello, Ryan. Hello, Ryan. Ryan's got lots of emails from me all about making this thing happen. That's great. They want lots of people to use this space to make things happen. So that's why they were so keen to help this happen. Um, have I left any? Oh, my crew, Leon. Leon, Leon is the guy with all the technology. He's got cameras. <laughs> Don't say anything bad about Leon. Somewhere in this room, there's a camera right now directed in your face, in the middle of your own space. This, I'm not allowed to leave. This, look, apparently, if I move this, oh, it works. I'm moving this way. <laughs> And, and Neil, Neil's just been a general good guy who's sorted lots of stuff out. You can just throw stuff at Neil. Uh, Neil. <laughs> and he'll catch them, he'll fix them for you and throw them back again. So we have a few people who want to come and talk, and they're, they're, they're not too shy about doing that. So I'm going to mention some of their names. In a, in, a, in a little while, we'll have Genevieve. Genevieve is a teacher a little bit like me, <laughs> except she's got hair. Okay? <laughs> And there's a few other differences between the spot, because it's a bit more so. Neil's going to tell, oh sorry, Jeremy's a teacher, she's going to tell a little bit about how, how she thinks Raspberry Pi could help what she's doing, but at the same time, Jeremy is organising loads and loads of events, and there's a bit of a race going on between me and Jeremy. That's so not true! <laughs> oh, okay, that's not true. So I'm in the lead at the moment. <laughs> works for an organization called Numb Rewired States. If, if you know somebody who's under the age of 18, you really need to get them in tune with Numb Rewired States. And Neil will tell you why in a little bit. And Neil's come up with some fantastic Raspberry Pi uh, things like field servers and that he's going to tell you about that. Leon, were you going to do any talking tonight? Not tonight. No. Not tonight. Filming. Okay. Too much filming. We have, we have <coughs> also, we have oh, some Ristos people in here. Give this a shout, Ristos people. <laughs> Uh, if you don't know what this DOS is, you're soon going to find out, because in a few moments they're going to give us a little bit about that and why it means in the graphic time. Um, somebody who said they don't want to speak, and I'm hoping he changed his mind, Mr. Pang, SK Pang. 
brilliant guy. You probably don't, you may have never met him before. He's doing loads and loads of stuff. He's selling lots of things that, I don't know how he's making a profit, but he's got lots <laughs> of little kits and gadgets and stuff that you can buy. I took it up to him, give him five pounds for an SD card that he's prepared to me. I've stuck it in my Raspberry Pi. Hopefully I get back to the hotel it's working. I haven't had a chance to test it yet. We're not selling blind SD cards. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, he's bought a light chaser kit, and I expect this is going to be very popular. So in a little while, you bring it over there, and you can go and ask me questions. If you don't talk to anybody tonight, you walk out of the building, you're not really going to get much chance to see. It's all about meeting people and talking to people. Now, um, Timothy, are you okay to talk for a few minutes? Okay. Great. <laughs> So let's hear it for Genevieve. Can you pass the line here, Dave? Hi, um, I'm Genevieve. I work at Dorothy Senior School in Brighton, and my Twitter handle is Pegleggen, or which actually was Pegleggen. Um, we currently don't have any Raspberry Pis, nor do we have any budget for Raspberry Pis. So we've um, kind of contacted our sort of local digital companies and we've got somebody to donate three to us when the educational kit comes up, which is rather nice. Um, so we're going to be using that as like a sort of digital lab to sort of test about. So we're going to get like Xbox Connect controllers, um, sort of interface with lots of different things. So they're kind of like a working lab, like if you had a cool campus to work. But that's what we want. That's what we're trying to get anyway in our um, in our school. <coughs> Whether that we do is a different matter because it's all to do with money. Um, and then what um, Alan was kind of hinting at is that um, a week on Friday, um, I'm doing a hack day at my school with 250 students of Year Nine, which isn't all of our year group, by the way. It'd be 350 if it was one of our year groups. And is it this computer can I open it later? Oh, is, oh actually, can somebody do it for me? <laughs> Thank you. The joys of being one hundred. Um, um, so the um, the link to our hack day page, uh, which the students are doing, is www.dorothy-stringer.co.uk forward slash hack day. Yeah, so stringer.co.uk. Like all, like all schools, we don't have any school extensions. We have a company extension. Yeah. There we go. Right, so there we go. So this is um, uh, just a brief overview of our day. Um, and part of it is that the students will be building um, something. Um, so either a web app, a phone app, a website, a Twitter extension, a G Plus extension. Um, and at the day, uh, because of some of the people I know, I've got um, Clear Left, who, so there's a lot of Brighton companies, if you don't know who they are, so Clear Left, got front end developer, we've got Code Club coming, um, UX designer, um, Aral Balkan is another one who's going to talk about UX design, and we have AppShed releasing two um, extensions of their software. We also have um, Silvano and Lewis from uh, Google offices in London coming down do some stuff. Plus lots of other people got three university professors. I just kind of asked them when, can you come down? It's me, you know, disabled, please. Or any anything to get anyone to come down and join it. But basically part of the day, it will, will be live broadcast like we're doing this, um, using Google Air Hangouts, all being well with our bandwidth. <laughs> and um, on top of this, there's also a um, I just, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I just needed to scroll down so you can see the day. Um, so uh, part of it is that anyone can join in. Uh, there's also lots of stuff for everyone to do just within a lesson. So there's um, presentations, there's a workbook, there's PDFs, and there's also, uh, which I'm doing at the moment, an uh, iBook to go with it so that you can actually... This is just for me trial on lots of software which I want to use my students. And this particular site is actually being built with me and the students, and it's fully um, accessible to everyone, including leaders. It's a liquid design, so it works on tablets all the way down to sort of any mobile device. I did get told off by a lot of UX designers, so I had to change it. <laughs> so it does actually work properly now. Um, so yeah, so uh, basically this, um, anyone can join in. 
and I'd like everybody to join in. That's the whole kind of purpose of it, is that to create that kind of, the same sort of way as Alan and all the rest of us are doing that creative global classroom. You know, nobody's the teacher, everybody's the teacher, and we're all students as well. So, and that's, so that's one of the things that I'm doing. And then um, another thing that I do is I actually teach year one and two classes how to program in Scratch. Um, which is actually really, really good, and they are a lot better than most of our, my year nine. Uh, in terms of certainly having a go at failing, um, so we do that with Lego, we do, and one of the other things that we want to do is sort of expose them to the sort of Raspberry Pi, but obviously I need to learn that first, and also learn to program in Python. <laughs> so a few little learning things for me. So, um, and thank you, Alan, for letting me plug my hat up. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so this is all me planning it on my own, and I'd like everybody to join in. So it'll all be live, and you can get it through here. And um, the hashtag is literally hashtag hack day. So nothing too exciting. But um, so, and if anyone wants to do anything, if they want to do um, join in any other hangouts and you're not here, feel free, just let me know, and we can uh, slot it in and make you a leader. And thanks very much. Thank you. We're still allowed in our school to do actually activities week, um, which a lot of schools aren't, which is why I've built in the one hour thing. So we have lots of options that they can take, um, and actually most of the students wanted to do it, so therefore we kind of made it. Not necessarily compulsory as such, but um, it's, the, um, it's quite unusual to get sort of um, access to 350, sorry, 250 of the students to do something off curriculum and just kind of go for it and not really worry about any of files which is likely to happen. Yeah. So yeah, so mm. we can do that part. And please, if you have any more questions for Genevieve, she'll be floating around as she does with her stick. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but she'll happily answer any questions. Now, uh, web, address. web address, Genevieve. Web address for... www.dorothy-finger forward slash hack day. Yeah, this is my school website. But you can also, if you do a search on Twitter, at Peg Leggan, lots of G's in it, you can send a message and say, tell us again. Like maybe somebody will put a, a London, hash, Raspberry Jam, Peg Leggan site is, and then people can find out about it. Now, in, a, in a couple of minutes, Neil Ford is going to demonstrate something that's very much Raspberry Jam, eh, Raspberry Pi, I'm going to have to stop doing that. Um, and... Neil is demonstrating just how you use Twitter to, to share something. <laughs> <laughs> so that hash Raspberry Jam Bright is cool. Oh Neil, you are so good. Didn't I say he was good? <laughs> now I'm sorry, I'm well that's it. I'm not gonna apologize. If this evening seems like there's a lot of talk about education. Because the, the, the plan, the aim of the Raspberry Pi is to support education. Some people, if you go around and talk to them, say, oh, well, children learn in schools is boring and ICT. It's not fit for what, what they need and all this kind of thing. And Michael Gold, our lovely, lovely Secretary of State. Um, <laughs> so you're on your own, Andy. Let's hear it for Roman numerals. <laughs> No, he really does have a use. Michael Gold has a use. Did you know the Secretary of State of Education and said to invent CRB regulations? Oh, right, okay. So he's really useful if you've got like 500 kids in one location <laughs> and you don't want to get everybody CRB checked. A bit like, like Hacks of the Future. Sometimes well, like, Hacks of yeah. the Future or possibly yeah. the Festival of Hope, the only one state. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we're getting to accept the event. We're trying to be so each other with clubs for our own little project. Yeah, <laughs> Now, um, just before Neil, I, I, I can do the, what's that comedian called? Because, uh, and and he, he has lots of comedians on, he fills in the bits in between. Yeah, one of them. Okay. Anyway, um, so we've got teachers in schools, but about two years or so, if they want to try and form and make the curriculum go in a certain direction, like maybe it should have more about programming, maybe it should be software engineering, maybe it should be about computer science. So some teachers like myself and Genevieve are trying lots of different things. And 
really wanted with raspberry jam to help. I don't know where you live, there's maybe a school, and they're banging their heads back now saying, how on earth do we get computing into the curriculum? And maybe you know with Raspberry Pi how we can make that happen. So I'm going to pass it over to Neil now, and we'll pick up on that other thing a little bit later. So Neil Ford is, if you're looking on Twitter, he's at Neil C. Ford. C as in the letter C. Thank you, Alan. Right, OK, I'm going to talk to you about a couple of things this evening. Um, let me find the first bit. And then, yeah, look, oh, Amazon wish list. I didn't bother with the presentation. Um, <laughs> no, really, because it actually doesn't work yet, but I'll explain why. Right, this came out of an event that we, uh, a number of us attended in Devon about six weeks ago, Andy? Four to six weeks? About that. Um, we attended a hack day for the Field Studies Council, who are the organisation, they're a charity, and they run the vast majority of um, school field trips to schools, for geography, biology, botany, that kind of thing. It's where, where the school, where the kids go, and they've got centres all over the country, and we went to this absolutely fantastic place down in Devon, weather was nice, you know, food was great, beer was awesome, you know, I don't drink, but the beer was really good apparently, and we had a really good time. Now, one of the problems that they had is that they've got all the kids turn up, and they've all got smart devices, so they've all got their smartphone, be they you know, Apple, Android, whatever, or they might even have iPads, and the centre has iPads. But out in the middle of the field, and I don't really do mean a field, or alternatively, knee deep in water in a river, there's no network coverage, there's nothing, no cellular, no, no cellular, no Wi-Fi. And the question is, how can you get your kids to use, be able to use their smartphones to aid the data capture that they currently do on bits of paper and pencil? And hence, the portable pie came to, to, to my mind. Now, I didn't actually get a chance at the weekend to build this, because uh, I've only got my Raspberry Pi about two days before and I haven't got all the bits. But I've subsequently been sitting down and working out what I need and actually making some of it work and figuring out what will or will not work and stuff like that. So basically what you do, you're going to start with, this is on a slightly bigger board because this has got a breadboard on it. Where did you get that awesome board from, that case? Where did I get the awesome case from? Yeah, oh yes, yeah. this is an SK Pang case. Um, <laughs> If I scroll down, there you go. Raspberry, that's the, this is the one that comes with their experimenters. <laughs> oh, I'm too stupid yeah. to do that. There right. uh, we go. SKPang Electronics. SKPang.co.uk. Uh, SK All sorts of lovely. This is part of their experimenters kit, which comes with the breadboard, slightly larger. Um, board to mount it all on, some LEDs, uh, jumper leads for the GPIO so that you can suspect it's roughly what that demonstration that is there is running on. Um, this, is kit, this is kitted up like this because this goes to my nephew at the end of next week. He's only 10 and he doesn't know he's getting it yet. So I'm uh, taking him to Coda Dojo London and then when we get back to his house he's going to find out he's got one of these to play with. Um, and then I'll nip that one until my next one arrives. Anyway, right, so you take the case, you take the Raspberry Pi, it's got the SD card in it. You need a battery. So this thing, 7,000 milliamp external battery. According to the Raspberry Pi wiki, this will actually run a Raspberry Pi for 12 hours. Somebody's actually tested it. Um, and it's got standard USB outs, one is 1 amp and one is 2 amps, um, which is like oh, fantastic. You take a dinky little connector, um, which goes from that into the micro USB, so that you've got power for your Raspberry Pi, and you add a wireless adapter, this one from Macu, um, which works, I know it works because I've got one and that actually does work. That now works very nicely. Um, and the idea is, put that all together, install a web server on it, and then install um, a web app. Now, in particular, I am talking about a web app by the wonderful name of Field Log Analysis Instant Resource. This was one of the hacks that came out of the hack day. Um, 
completely independent of me thinking about how the heck do I make a public web server that can put a bar stuck in rucksack and take it to a river. Um, this basically is an HTML5 app that would run on the server, kids would connect to it with their iPhones or their Androids or whatever, and it actually allows them to log the data that they're capturing, so river depth, flow, the width of the river, what the bottom of the river looks like, but it's also designed to um, provide answers to questions. Um, so the kids can ask, it's basically the, the, the app will have resources. Now one of the big problems, or the follow-up problems that they have at the moment, is that with all the paper that the kids fill in, they will get back to the centre after a day in the, in, the, in the great outdoors. And then one of the instructors has to spend the dinner hour, or within a half hour I should say, while the kids are having some food, typical you know, school dinner type food, they have to sit and type in all the results so that afterwards the kids can go into the classroom for about an hour and they can look at the results. The beauty of this is it all gets written out of the SD card. Pull the SD card out, stick it in something else, suck the data off, and then I will, um, we'll, skip over, um, we'll skip over this one thing by putting by the other four. But, yep, we won't pass that. Uh, where's it gone? Where's it gone? Here we go. Historical data driven educational journeys. Um, this basically takes the data that Flair would generate and then allows you to map it or analyze it in you know, very, some very clever graphs. And they actually have a, a demonstration. Now, of course, there is no, one of these are actually live, but there is a demonstration that shows you, they took a load of river, historical river data and then mapped it. And it was great because they showed like, here's one school. And this is what the bottom of the river looked like to six different sets of kids, and he went all over the place. So one no, minute. No, oh, one minute. I'm yeah. going out on time. You should have said. Anyway, so yes, idea: take the Raspberry Pi, stick it in a box, make it fully portable, and then use it for uh, in-field data capture. Right. I've got a minute. The other thing I want to talk to everybody about is this young real-world state. Yeah. Right. Now this. We're this year. We are taking 500 kids in 50 centres around the country, taking them, getting them to do hacks with real world data, open data from the government and other sources, and then at the end of that week, so they go Monday to Friday, and Friday afternoon, they come to the Festival of Code, which if they don't charge us an arm and leg, we found a venue for today. <laughs> We're going to go to Birmingham, it's going to be awesome. Yes, camping in the centre of Birmingham. That's going to be an interesting trip, but we've got, we've got a way around that. It doesn't involve jackhammers in your tarmac. Um, but basically, youngrewiredstate.org, as Alan says, if you know anybody that is between, oh well, actually under the age of 18, our long, young, youngest uh, participant last year was seven. Um, and boy, did he tell, did he tell, did he tear the nice man from number 10 and you asshole, but that's a whole different story. Nine seconds left. Um, Basically, if you've got anybody who's a kid and you think might be interested, get them here, get them signed up, we'll allocate them to a centre, they'll learn to code, they can come to this massive party in Birmingham, it's going to be awesome, it's going to be food, drinks, sugary sweets, the whole shooting match. Um, and if we really all come off, and I'm so crossing my fingers, one of the judges is going to be Lily Cole, the supermodel and actress, she's behind us 100%. Um, so she's going to be one of our judges, that's going to be fantastic. So yeah, Young Rewired State, 500 kids, lots of hacking, lots of code, really is um, a big, big project. This is what I now spend my life doing, having answered a Twitter from Hubmum, otherwise known as Emma Mulqueenie, and going, yeah, I've got some free time, I'll give you a hand. In February, I'm now literally 24-7. Um, this is my life, much to my wife's. No, no, she's quite happy in that house. Um, anyway, so young people are state, and then you say, oh, please, please, you know kids, we've still got space, we want as many kids as possible, we want to get them coding, we want to get them looking at real world problems, and you know, we want to generate the next Zuckerberg, and we'd like to keep them in this country. That's one of our aims. We're not losing these kids to San Francisco, we want to keep them here, we want to find them jobs, and we want to make this a better country. Take it up for Neil C. Ford, Young Rewired State. Neil, can you can you tweet your wish list?
if people possible. Because the people at run, running Cambridge want to know it, what ah, it is. Wish <laughs> lists. Uh, top of the wish lists. We're going to have another speaker in a moment. Deadline for kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not at this moment in time. Oh, brilliant. But, no. but as a deadline for developers, your event as a deadline for developers passed, uh, sorry, uh, adults, mentors. No, no, mentors can sign up as well. Yeah. We're still looking for some centres. It really is. If, if you just go online and find some of the videos from last year, or if you look at Learning Without Frontiers, there's a demonstration there, children talking. It, it's just. Uh, I, I, sorry if you've heard this story. A few years, three years ago, uh, parents even, so I'm a teacher, a year eight pupil, so 13 year old boy, his parents came and sat in front of me at parents even, and they said, um, How's Jonathan doing? So I looked and I said, Jonathan's doing really well. Uh, on his last test, he got 98%, which wasn't bad, but in test before he got 100%. Uh, you can get A's and A's and A's and A's for everything. So I'm really, really pleased. And then there's an awkward silence. And he said, Has Jonathan been telling me what he's been doing on his computer? And I'm not been looking at pictures of stuff and videos and stuff online, has he? No, 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 no. Has he not mentioned the PayPal thing? Like, what happened with PayPal? Oh, no. <laughs> Don't tell me, you got your credit card and he started buying stuff and spent thousands. No, no, no. And, and the, the mother reached in her bag and she pulled out one, two, three PayPal statements from when he was 10 years old. First one said £11,000, second one said £13,000, and the third one said £18,000. By the time he was 13, he'd made £18,000 just in that one year. That's all he was. He lives on a farm. Mum and dad are farmers, his brother and sister love animals, he hates cows, he says they stink, he doesn't like drinking milk. So he's taught himself how to comb in his bedroom. They said, you don't really think he's getting a lot from his ICT lessons. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> now earlier this evening I asked to fill in some post-it notes with the kind of things he wanted from this evening. And I've just gone and picked up a sample. Leo White, he said he wanted some beer. Leo, <laughs> have you got a beer? You've got some no, kind of coke. Sat in the wrong place, and he's been over there. Raspberry Jam is about making dreams come true. Okay. <laughs> um, so he's interested in robotics, and they've done a squiggle at the bottom that looks like an E. Yeah, 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 it's you. Okay. Um, talk to me. There's a there's a fantastic project that's going to be announced soon where you've got this sort of a robotic interface that sits right on top of a Raspberry Pi board. Oh, you okay? <laughs> you give a little bit more than you wanted. <laughs> and this board sits on top, it's got inputs and outputs and relays and all that sort of stuff. Perfect. For, just imagine a robot that costs you £40 for, for all the control part of it. You can leave it in a tree, in a lake, in a field, you can do whatever you want with it. And if somebody runs over it in your truck, it will cost you 40 quid for another one. Um, some <laughs> <laughs> Somebody wants to a chance to teach disengaged kids programming. Oh, oh, oh hang on, it's pointing. Is that you, by any chance? EBD35. Yeah. Are you starting to see any chances at the moment how you could use Raspberry Pi to. You're here. So, Mary wants to know at some point during the season, go over to her, how can she teach disengaged children programming? So, like the, the boy I mentioned, Jonathan. He wasn't getting any of them ICT lessons. How could the Raspberry Pi help him? Go and tell Mary when you get a chance. What else? We had somebody. When when do you want the next event to happen? Mark S has said tomorrow. <laughs> Where's Mark? Okay, well, Mark, courtesy of the Guardian, I'm still in London until half past eight tomorrow. So let's get a table. You buy the wine, I'll buy the pizza, and we, we'll have our own little jam somewhere. That wasn't a date. I'm married, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I've got kids, okay? But I like pizza and I like wine. Um, and Keith Dunlop, he says he's come here because he wants to demonstrate wrist sauce and raspberry pie. Would you like to do that now, Keith? <laughs> Tell you what, let's do it. Okay, great. <laughs> Show it over to you. Just to wear the medallion. Okay. And like me, you've got long hair and it just tangles up in the hair. And oh no, it's terrible. Right, um, this is probably not going to work, but uh, what we're actually going to do is um, <laughs> grab a Raspberry Pi, which is over here, and relevant bits of hardware with the cables and things like that. I'm sticking them on here. Oh, um, what else? Oh, yeah, power from the keyboard, that might help. Oh, the mouse. 
What we're going to demonstrate is an alternative operating system that does work on the Raspberry Pi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put myself down for a minute um, because I have to plug things in and do very complicated hardware things, which um, I'm sure is going to make you all sweat quite a lot. And uh, so bear with me for about a couple minutes and then we'll be all right. Can I say something while you're doing that? You can say one thing. Right, right. 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 Matt? Let's do Matt here. Okay. <laughs> well, I want to talk to the Matt who wants to power a whole cylinder with a Raspberry Pi. Wow. <laughs> Is he ambitious? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's make it happen for Matt. That's Matt's one of Matt's dreams. Is it? Or Easily <laughs> done. <laughs> uh, Leo. Leo doesn't demand much. He's well as well in beer. He wants to attach a USB robot arm to a big track and have a Raspberry Pi oh, brain. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Already got the robot arm working. <laughs> Let's make it happen. I would have brought it with me. Take the photos thing. and tell us all about it when it happens. How are we going? Oh, we're ready to go. We've been ready for ages. <laughs> <laughs> right, there's very good reasons why we're doing this. Um, let me just power it up. If I can plug it in correctly. Yes, you are allowed to make any kind of insertion joke you like right at this moment. And put it on Twitter, because I'm not on Twitter, so I don't care. <laughs> All right, we well, should get the, the screen of death in a minute, because I'll have to repower it. This operating system is ancient. Um, there's some people that work for Broadcom, who were the people that make the system on a chip that's at the heart of um, a Raspberry Pi. They used to work for this British computer company called Acorn. Anybody heard of them? Yeah. Well, Acorn created this chip, and I presume you've all heard the story of uh, when they were, they'd gone over to California to find the replacement for the chip they needed for the BBC Model B. And they went to one of their suppliers, and Sophie Wilson, who works for Broadcom, thought, I can do that. And she did. That was the firm first ARM processor. The next ARM processor was a thing called ARM2. And the computer that that came out on was a thing called Nacon Archimedes, which is 25 years ago. And this is the operating system that ran on it. What was ARM originally? Well, yes, ARM. Advanced Risk Machine, or you could call it Acorn's Risk Machine, depending on how you interpreted it. So there's an awful long history between this particular operating system and the ARM architecture. Um, these days, it uh, runs on an awful lot of different ARM platforms. It runs on the Texas Instruments OMAP 3s, the OMAP 4s, and it runs on the Raspberry Pi. Now the reason for the Raspberry Pi port is partly to do with the fact that there are people that work for Broadcom who are very familiar in the rest of us communities. Oh yeah, we know who they are. And also the fact that um, historically, um, Acorn used to sell an awful lot of computers in schools. Um, so obviously the, the, the education link has been there since the mid to late 80s. Well, in fact, since the early 80s. I mean, the first computer I can remember in my school in 1984, you should have to say the Mickey of how old I am as well. Um, was the BBC Model B. Of course, that was just what happened in the UK. So, because of the push to the education and the Raspberry Pi, then obviously it made sense to get RiskOS running. Now, RiskOS is this version of RiskOS, I don't even think the developers will call it alpha release. You probably see the screen tearing on the screen and all sorts of other stuff. Horrors that lurk, but it does work, even though this mouse is switched off. There we go, plenty of hours. Right, what I'm going to do is just sort of talk you through the operating system um, very, very quickly. Um, then I'm going to 
enter a thing called the task window. It's the equivalent of a terminal on those horrible other alien operating systems that were never really designed to natively run on ARM. Not that I'm biased. <laughs> right. First thing, obviously, is the big gray bar along the bottom. Uh, that's always been there. Uh, you'll be familiar with it on almost every other kind of operating system. This one did it first. And we have various little things along the bottom. These are your drives. This is actually a speed card. And it's just, yes, it's like an operating system. You know, look, I've got a collection of folders. Now, um, if you look at that window, you might notice there's something missing about it. Anybody care to tell me what they cannot see? Yeah, exactly. You don't have the usual rubbish of file, edit, and all that. Because from day one, the people who designed RiskOS have realized when you're holding a mouse, you've got three fingers free. So you use your middle one to get your menu. And you use the normal one, the right one, if you're used to that, to double click and load things. The other one can do much more clever things, like for instance, multiple selects, just like that. Note, I'm not using the keyboard. Now this thing from day one was always designed as, oh, well, if you've, got a, if you've got a mouse, you might as well use it to the best of its abilities. So that's the basics of the operating system. Um, this version of the operating system is actually um, an open source variety. It's the license it's released under is a thing called a shared license. Uh, the idea being that if you're using it just within the community, blah, 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 you're not trying to make any money out of it, you just use it. But if you are a company that wants to sell a product, it's got the operating system in it, then you have to pay the exorbitant license fees of 20 quid. Right. Oh, I've not configured the network on here because the, we need, um, because of the alpha state of the operating system, we actually need a wired network connection. Um, but the website to get um, the operating system from is very difficult. It's called riskosopen.org. You just put in riskos, it's about the second entry into Google. Third entry, sorry. Um, right, well, let's demonstrate a few things working. Um, you saw this. Now, this is a piece of, yes, we still have commercial software. This is about the most powerful vector drawing package that exists in the world. Um, and these are, any of you that do remember RiskOS from many years ago, and the only person that does is just walked away, and I'm going to go walk around here and go come here. Look, watch this. Do you remember this demo? Yeah. All right, you ready? I'm not the only person in the room. I know, I know. This is the, so this is the, the oh, oh, demonstration. Uh, this is uh, the uh, this is uh, the vector uh, image. Um, and they're well known, well known, and they're well known for being um, for the demonstration of how quick these things really are. Because the OS is, oh yeah. <laughs> the operating system's huge. It's six megabytes. <laughs> um, and in fact, there's been arguments in the community recently about going above the four limit. <laughs> yeah, that's, and that's also the other thing. Is that in, yes, um, in older, well, older machines, um, the operating system is actually in a ROM or an E squared or something like that. Obviously, on a Raspberry Pi or a Panabol or a Beagleboard or something like that, there is a part of the SD card cunningly hidden from this user, so I don't delete it, um, which contains the operating system. Yeah, all six meg of it. Right, those of you that do remember this demonstration, it's quite quick, isn't it? And this is only a 700 megahertz machine. Yeah, yeah. Well, 500 makes a difference. You should see what it's like at 1.5 gig, mate. It's amazing. Um, so that's that. I mean, obviously, you can see there's quite a lot of tearing going on the screen and things like that. That's because um, RiskOS's mouse is actually... <laughs> hardware embedded, um, and one of the things that delayed the, the Raspberry Pi port was uh, the USB, um, because the Raspberry Pi has a rather interesting way of doing USB, this has been diplomatic, um, in that because the, the age of the system on a chip, um, it doesn't have the normal OHCI and EHCI controllers, so you actually have to implement an awful lot of the USB in software. Those of you that have looked at some of the Raspberry Pi Linux forums will have seen that there's um, the driver, 
that uh, the Raspberry Pi organization are using for their Linux distribution is, is producing quite serious processor overload. We think it's happening as well, but uh, we'll get it sorted out. Right, now then, I've had enough of doing demonstrations and things like that. It's, you know, you can do, it's a, it's a computer. No, 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 it's like a, like a desktop computer, but it's a Raspberry Pi, but it's a desktop computer, but it's a Raspberry Pi. But that's a bit boring when we've got all these teachers and education people in the room. So I'm now going to ask people to remember something else. Want to get the button? Right. This is a thing called the task window. It's risk os version of the command line. Um, I don't ever use this. I can't stand being in the command line. I've got, a, I've got a keyboard, I've got a mouse. Why the hell should I have to be typing things in to tell the computer what to do? However, for the purposes of education, you need to type in these little letters. Anybody know the basic? Yeah? Is it basic? One minute. Yeah, easily. It's Dave, Dave Brabham, and um, I don't know if you saw one of the interviews done on the BBC, so we were talking about the Russian file. This is about 12 months ago. And he said, we really need a copy of BASIC on this machine to build into the operating system. We'll stop. End of story. Any questions? Woo! <laughs> well, that's an odd question, but we'll leave it there. Can I have you tell me? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, sorry, I should have mentioned this. There will be uh, a fully stable release in time for the educational release in September. Well, no, it's going to have to happen. If it doesn't happen, then heads will fall. Well, it's quite simple. I didn't think that teachers were that interested in this kind of thing. I'm looking at one around here somewhere. I think you'll see teachers are interested. There's another one in Green Charles. Now, we're going to have another talk in a moment, but. Um, Somebody said this is Alan's gig, and it said it's not. This is your gig. This is all about you. You are the people who make London Raspberry Jam. I don't even live in London. I live about 250 miles away. This is a special thing for me. I'll be here at the next one. <laughs> but I hope that you will all be here for the next one. Um, some of you filled in some post-it notes. John Davies. Is that right? Davies? Yeah, Davies. Davis. Oh, sorry, John. John wants to know. Can you see John? John's over here with it. Where did you find the Guinness? Nobody told me there was Guinness here. <laughs> I'm going to have another drink of Guinness in Ireland and beat more than the Euros. <laughs> okay. So, John wants to know if anybody's got the same problems as he has with the Raspberry Pi. And he wants to see what people are doing. So, when we finish in about 15 minutes, we finish the talk, please go and talk to John and find out, please, because we need to fix whatever his problems are. Okay? Oh, he's got he's, he's a machine as well, so come and see him. Um, we also have, I think it's Alex Z. Oh, hello, hello. Hello, Alex. That's a lot of L's in it. To see, Alex wants to see what other people are doing with their Raspberry Pis. So if you've got one and you're doing stuff, Alex, just wave again. Okay? Alex has got mo much, much more hair than I have. He's got lots of it here and here and some of the side as well. Okay, just to show off. Simon Neal. Simon Neal has sent me about 20 emails trying to get a ticket to come here tonight. I bet you wish you hadn't bothered now. <laughs> Simon wants, he says he's heard about the Raspberry Pi a couple of months ago, which creates excitement about how to engage with my kids and his kids in how to write and not just read. So Simon's got a notepad. He wants to find out lots of stuff. So go and find Simon at some point. Martin V. Who's Martin V? Hello, Martin. Martin wants these things to happen every month. So, Martin, you're the guy. Okay? Say hello to Ryan and Cyber and all the others, and you set it up. People will come. If you build it, they will come. I heard that in a film once. And somebody's not put the name on, says they're not sure what they want, but they're quite interested in regular meetings where people can share what they're doing with their pie, get ideas to help them, etc. Come and talk to Martin B, and he'll make that happen. Okay, now, some of our sponsors tonight, they've paid for all your hope and fanta. 
and all those kind of things, but not the scones. They, have, they are doing lots of things that don't involve Raspberry Pis at the moment because there just aren't enough Raspberry Pis to around. So they put together lots of things that are going to happen this summer. This is the summer of code. So John Bevan, big it up for John Bevan. <laughs> you might know John Bevan as Bevangelist on Twitter. So if you type in Bevan, B E V A N, Jellist. Okay, clever. That's, that's, that's almost as clever as like my teacher. Frank, you know. Evangelist, R E T T. And now he's preaching all about coding. He's spreading the good news about it. So he's going to talk about a product called Thimble, which has only just in the last couple of days sort of become public. And it launched on Monday. Now, I have to say, it's nothing at all at the moment to do with Raspberry Pi. But you're going to get this in a Raspberry Jam, because just like when I used to take my saxophone to play it in church, you, you sometimes get people to bring things along. And people go, whoa, a saxophone in church? I've never had, had that before. And um, John is going to talk to you about Thimble. Yeah. Oh. When I was uh, 11 years old, I had in school. We had BBCBs. Anybody here have one of them? Well, quite a few of you. I could, my parents couldn't afford me, so they bought me as an X Spectrum. What no, Steve? 81, no, 1983. <laughs> yeah. And Steve Ferber, he refers it to as, as the Rectum. <laughs> I mean, he would do, because he's made quite a lot of money out of the uh, BBC Micro. And, um, I wanted to find out about how to program it. And one of the things I did was I went to, in Preston, we had what's called PACE, Preston Atari Computer Enthusiasts. They met once a month. And lots of people with Ataris, 400s, 800s, 1200s, you name it, they had every kind of Atari. And unfortunately for me, mainly men with beards and sandals and T-shirts. No stereotypes there. And when I told my mum, I was hanging around with a bunch of 40-year-olds. They were like showing me lots of cool stuff. She starts to get a bit worried. This was before we had things like CRB checks. So the idea with a Raspberry Jam is that they are open to anybody of all ages. Oh, hello. How old are you? I'm 13. Welcome to Raspberry Jam. Okay. You need to carry the torch for Raspberry Jam. We've got somebody else who's uh... um, I'm 12. Can we go any younger than 12? Oh. I get a little bit upset when people send me emails saying, can I bring my son, can I bring my daughter along to Raspberry Jam? Yes, of course! I'm a teacher! That's what my job is all about, trying to teach children how to code. And um, maybe we can teach some of adults how to do it as well. <laughs> Does anybody like to come up and take the mic for a minute? Ready, oh, would you like to take the mic for a minute? Take the medallion as well. I promise we're going to finish in about 10 minutes short and then you can go with me and go to do stuff. Well, I was going to ask for a volunteer from the audience, but now, because we're using Ryan's laptop, he can be our, our volunteer. Um, this is Thimble. It launched on Monday. It's a tool to get people tinkering and playing with the web. So you can take people from absolutely zero level of uh, knowledge through to publishing on the web in a matter of minutes. So what we'll do now is by way of a demonstration. You'll probably struggle to see at the back because it, we're going to do a little bit of code um, on the left hand plane in a second. So if you want to get around if you're interested, if not, that can go to one in the chat. But uh, if Ryan scrolls down a little bit on this page until we get to sorry, back up. Let's click on Gimbal, it's up there. And then scroll down to get started. Pick a project. And then scroll down until we get to the make and mean project. It's one of the really simple ones to get people started. That's the one. And then, so this is Gimbal. Uh, they're all laid out around the same format where you've got the left hand pane is commented HTML and CSS and then on the right it's rendered by as you type. So this is a bit of you know train wheels, you're not starting with a <coughs> blank sheet of paper. You've got something to get yourself uh, get started with. So 
So more confident or older learners, they can read through the comments with code and follow it. Or if we've had we've tested this with code dojo with uh, children as young as five or six, and it, we'll, I'll talk you through something that's you know you can do with kids that age. Actually, if you turn the hints off for some of them, get in the way of So, for an example, let's make a web page for tonight. So, if Ryan goes to the Raspberry Pi Van Dyke page and then copy location for that image, go back into Thimble, and then here's an image tag in the, in the code. So, if he gets rid of that and pastes in the image from the Van Dyke page, there it is straight away. If he scrolls down a bit, let's do this really quickly and just in the header one tag. If he just deletes um, the top caption, we don't need that. <coughs> Although I was going to get you to edit the bottom one and put the like, Raspberry Pi or the hashtag or what's that? Hash, hash Raspberry Jam or welcome to Moz London Raspberry Pi or something like that. <laughs> and then scroll down a bit further. So the colour, let's change that to pink maybe. So, uh, that's a bit light. Deep, deep pink or fuchsia or what? Well, deep pink, I think. Okay. Well, try that, go on there. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. That'll do for a raspberry. I like that. And then if you scroll down a little bit further, and again, till we get to where we can just move this text down slightly, so add a few pixels onto that. The next one up is headed to, I think. So, adding top, change that to 270. A bit more space. Click publish. <coughs> Are you sure? Yeah, that goes onto the web. There's your URL. So, you can point your granddad who lives on the other side of the world, you can point your friends in the playground. That's a piece of the web that you have created. Anyone who's watching this can uh, go to that URL if you want, which is thimble.webmaker.org slash p slash jjs, and you should get that page. That's you've moved. If you were talking about change, you know, turning from just reading to writing or consuming to creating, this is a tool that can get you doing it in however long you've just taken five minutes. Mm -hmm. something like that. So, and this is a suite, one of a suite of tools that we're building uh, underneath the WebMaker tools. So we've got Bimble, the system. There's Popcorn Maker, which is for editing video and making responsive web pages that sit around video. Um, Acosaurus, that's been up a while. So come and have a chat. This is a big area of focus for Mozilla going forward. And uh, we, we'd love to get good to get over running on a Raspberry Pi. Want to get a browser on the Raspberry Pi that we can get kids creating and not just consuming on the web. That's it. Big it up for the Dalian. The Dalian man. John Gavin. Thank you for that because he was the first speaker. I didn't have to say the God wasn't about. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm using you to backlight, actually. Thank you. Behind the seconds. Now, um, I've got four minutes left. In these next four minutes, I just I want to give you some ideas